back. October is Foster Family Month in BC. Joining us on the show today, Catherine Lovely. She has been fostering children in our community for the past 14 years. It's great yes. to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Yes, we're hoping to raise some awareness about some of the uh, the benefits and some of the uh, the things that the good things that come out of being a foster parent. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let's hear a little bit about your story, Catherine. Well. Um I would finished raising my children and I was no longer able to work in the workforce and I wanted something to do. And the best thing that I've done is raise children. So this is how I got into it. And uh, I really started to enjoy it. Um, and when I got to the heart of it, I found that these children were coming with a lot of baggage with them. And I've educated myself and really gotten into it and work with some pretty hard core kids now and I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I can't see me giving it up. Yeah. This isn't a job or something to take on for everybody, is it? You have to have certain qualities because <laughs> some of these kids uh, that are coming into yes. your home are coming in with things like FASD or ADD. Can yes. you talk about that? Yeah, those are very difficult ones. I specialize in the FASD one, mm -hmm. go to all the workshops and conferences. In fact, we adopted a child that came in with FASD and they are very hard. You have to be... Yeah, they take a lot out of you. <laughs> you have mm -hmm. to be there and it's a constant reminder every day to do your hair, your teeth, your face. And probably 20 years from now, we'll still be saying to them, did you do your teeth, hair and face? Mm -hmm. So it's a long-term commitment and all these children are different. And with the children comes a family because they're all different and unique. And so you're dealing with a lot of things, juggling with a lot of things. So for people who are thinking about seriously getting into this, um, you don't have to sign on for somebody to come into your house full time. They're also looking for respite and relief yes. workers. Yeah, and that's what I su would suggest. If you're not ready to jump into the pot, maybe um, get a little taste of it by doing some respite and uh, relief work where you're taking on what you want in your home or go to a home for a short period of time. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the fact that um, Right now in Kamloops, in our region, there's 119 active foster homes. Yes. Is this enough? Do you guys need more? Oh, it's, it's never enough. We always have children coming in and, and the cries out. It seems to be one month, it's a lot of teens coming in or a lot of safe babies coming in. So they're always wanting new homes so that they can readily have this mm -hmm. uh, to put them into. I know after hours even is still calling people like they call me and, and I've got no room to put them. So we're always needing homes in, in Kamloops. For you, what's the hardest part? Of fostering? <laughs> um, not agreeing with something that's being done because I don't think it's in the best interest of the child. It's a hard one to come to. But what is the satisfying part of it for you? The satis most satisfying part is when you see a foster child that, that was a lot of work and you didn't get right off with them. Years later, they come up and give you a hug and they say, you know what, I realize now what you were trying to teach me and I thank you for that. And you've had that situation, haven't you? Yes. Let's yes. talk about one of them that you mentioned in your bio to me that uh, uh, when they came to you, they were on drugs. When they yes. left, uh, one of them went back to drugs, but yes. the other one went on to be a functioning member of society, yes. got married, has a baby, you stay in contact. That's yes. got to be satisfying. Oh, it is. It's wonderful. We're, we're like a connected family and, you know, they're like our kids too. We sort of share them back with the families. Once they're part of our life, we... We treat them like we treat our own children and want to give them everything that we can. And I know when she was pregnant, we went out shopping and bought all the clothes for her baby and that. Mm -hmm. And so they come down regularly now and uh, we're part of their life and they're part of ours forever. Okay. And not only that, but the extension is to her, her family. The dad is always phoning us and seeing how we are. And so it's nice to make that connection. For people looking to get involved in this as well, you should know that there is support available. Um, oh. Even yourself, yes. you act as a liaison to, to other parents that need uh, somebody to lean on, have yes. questions. Can you talk about that? Yeah, um, a lot of times we'll run into a frustrating part. And the first thing we wanna do is lean to another foster parent. And I am a liaison for that. And to talk to them and just just talking to them and getting more suggestions on how we can handle something sometimes is enough. And if it isn't, um, ICS, Interior Community Services, works really close with the foster parents and they're our greatest supporters. 
They, they help us with our battles and, and good times and our functions. They're right connected with us. We are out of time, Catherine. I want to oh. say thank you for uh, coming on and sharing yes. your story with us. Uh, it sounds like you've had some great success stories yes. amongst the challenges as well. Um, so thank you for that. If there are people out there interested in uh, learning more about this, that website that's on the screen is a great start, as well as the phone numbers to learn a little bit more. Thank you for being here today. Thank you so much. All right, you're very welcome. We're okay. back in two minutes. Stay with us.